Yeah, we're going to set the record straight. We're going to give you props for the donkey picker. The donkey picker. Welcome to Fact or Freestyle. People love Dave Dory, and they always answer the phone when he calls. When we get him on Zoom, we ask him to confirm rumors. Let's see how far down the rabbit hole we go. I kind of need to do something about that, Joe. I did something before when I had Matt on, but it kept falling down, and I was just putting a piece of cardboard there. Remember when you and I rigged the leak in Michigan? Hey, guys. Uh, hello, Cam. Hi, uh, you Dave? Joe? Hey, well? hey, I'm Joe. How are you? A lot, mate. No. Joe is a, 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 an amazing flatlander that's been, uh, I don't know, you started in the late 80s, right, Joe? When did you start? I started writing in like November of 1985. Oh, okay. I thought it was late 80s. Yeah. And now he's like current top, like one of the top pros out there doing all this crazy new school trick. So I hope we're not keeping you from DJing tonight. No, not at all, man. I haven't done that for a while. I mean, you know, what with the pandemic and everything. Well, I mean, this is the first thing I've done for years. You know, I haven't spoke to anybody about bmx on tv or or the internet or anything but i don't even know the last time long time ago where, where are you at yeah. i'm in warrington at the minute mate oh okay right right near manchester yeah. <laughs> about maurice meyer having a condom sponsor <laughs> do you remember <laughs> that Craig? uh maurice meyer had a condom sponsor well, that's the, that's the fact of freestyle. <laughs> oh, I don't know anything about that. You're on a condom, according to sources. Yeah, Scotty Freeman bought a condom pack in England, and the guy, that, the picture of the guy looked exactly like Maurice Meyer. Oh, I see. Okay. <laughs> I remember meeting you, Eric. Correct me if I'm wrong, but it was 86, and we the horror team was doing a show at a contest, and you were like, doing the most crazy ramp variations and Wilkerson was just like, who is this nutcase? He's just doing hand plants. Weren't you doing hand plants in 86? Yeah, yeah, long before, long before. Okay, fact or freestyle, Eric Steele invented the bio air to Miami Hopper. I remember someone, and I thought it was you, do a big old air on a, I think it was a transfer, like a channel and you, came in super bio and missed the whole ramp and then flat bottom you're on a master but you held on and you bent the frame like the front end just completely bent up was that you do you remember that yeah that was a uh, whole shot whole shot i told you joe yeah yeah that was the first time i met you that's right uh, cool sponsored by kuhara you were sponsored and by kuhara was, yeah and that was my first wife for kuhara Okay. And uh, they never give me a new frame after that. So <laughs> my whole sponsorship with Kahara lasted 10 minutes. <laughs> so when you crashed, was it on a horror that was master? That Craig's fault, by the way. That was Craig's fault. That was. What was my fault? What, what, what's that again? <laughs> that was your fault, that big crash, man. What What crash? What, where was that? that the big, big crash, my big crash at Whole Shot. That was your fault. Was it? What did I do? <laughs> you could just come back from pipeline. And the, the Starway ramp, which it was on, got jacked to death because you like the vert on pipeline. Oh, oh, we jacked it up more vert. Ah. Yeah. Oh, hell, so man. I didn't that's how I missed it put it back in. Because <laughs> yeah. in them days, we didn't get to practice on the actual ramps, did we? And this is oh, like no, you. It was all it. It was yeah, and this was like your first air, Eric. I remember you just cranking as fast as you could and you just like went straight to flat bottom. What the crazy part was, you didn't ever let go. You just held on all the way down and the bike just like folded and you hit yeah. your head. And I was, I was like, oh God. And he got up, you got up and walked away. I don't know if you kept riding, I can't remember. No, that was it. That was, uh, that was my full ride for Kuhara. <laughs> <laughs> so he was a one air, Sponsorship. One, one, one air sponsorship deal, man. Yeah. All right. Some for one air. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> Ten months ago, Joe 
told me that he heard a rumor that uh, Joe Johnson had ants in his pants when he invented the tail whip. And I was like, what? I never heard that. Really? That sounds like freestyle. And that's when we started calling people and asking if Joe Johnson had ants in his pants when he, in, when he first did the first tail whip. I watched the Pete Augustine interview that you did. And oh, you yeah, asked good. that question. Yeah. And, and, and I guess he couldn't answer it as, as, as I can't answer that either. But did he? <laughs> did he have ants in his pants? <laughs> well, he, he denied was he sitting, it. Was he, was he sitting on an ant's nest or something? <laughs> yeah, that's, that's what Matt Hoffman said. Matt Hoffman said it was at my ramp and he remembers there's red ants, but Joe Johnson denies it. So maybe he has a little bit of a, you know, he's a little self-conscious about it. I remember it. actually talking of ants and bo Factor Freestyle. Craig Campbell had ants in his pants when he 540'd off the barge ramp at the two hip Texas comp. I remember actually talking of ants and bo getting bitten by ants. I remember getting bitten, watch, remember the uh, the two hip uh, half pipe competition, King of Earth on, on the barge in Texas. Yes. When Ron yes. put a ramp on the on the barge, I got bit on the ass by some ant, ran, uh, some red ants there. <laughs> I got bit on the ass by some red ants there. <laughs> I got bit on the ass by some red ants there. <laughs> Joe, so that maybe wasn't Craig. It was Craig Campbell. Did you did you debut any new tricks that time though? Well, I mean, you said he had ants in his pants when he bit your tail whips. I don't know about that, but I do remember getting bitten on the ass watching the Texas uh, two hip contest. And tell you, uh, uh, on, yeah. See, so. these are the stories start. That's why this show is to get the facts. And okay, now we, we have some- possible. Yeah. We know that it's possible now. Full disclosure, uh, Dave and I have heard portions of these stories and they sound outlandish. Uh, but we're asking guys if they have any other evidence that we can help stitch it together. Uh, Craig, like the ant in your pant on the barge in Texas that bit your ass. <laughs> yeah, well, that is true. That made you. I don't know, I don't know about Joe Johnson. <laughs> so that's fact. Yeah. Is that so, why you why you uh, five forty off into the water? Uh, yeah, because my no, my my ass was itching so much. Yeah. Yeah. Um, no, I just, um, I, I couldn't wait to do that. That was just like, um, you know, I just wanted to get my run finished so I could do that, really. That meant more, more to me than anything. <laughs> and I, I lost my bike and it had to be fished out. And, um, yeah, it's one of the local guys. I, I can't remember. I think someone tried to dive for it. And then uh, I think maybe someone got like a claw hammer and a piece of rope and fished it out. And that was like one of the first two hip contests, right? The, the vert ones. Yeah, that was 88. Yeah, 1988. Yeah, I've got a second there, I think. I did pretty yeah. good in that series. I've got some, got some good results, the street and the vert. Yeah, that's awesome. Do you it call it a, a 540 wall ride, or do you call it a 360? Well, a wall I mean, ride it kind of started out as wall ride 360 out. But, yeah. I mean, but basically, I guess it's a 540 because you kind of hit the wall, you're going towards it, and it's just like a 540, like you as if you were doing it on a ramp. Yeah. But you could argue it. Is it a 360? Is it a 450? Is it a 540? You know what I mean? It's like, <laughs> it's kind of, it could be all three, couldn't it, really? Yeah. Uh, you know, it's kind of a gray area. But it was, um, yeah, it was probably one of my magic moments in BMX for me personally. Um, so, Joe, what are some factor freestyles that we have for these guys? Fact or freestyle? Bob Harrow is an over gripper. I mentioned this in a, in a message to you, Craig. Is Bob Harrow an overgripper. So you met him in 1983, right? At the Harrow Skate Park. Uh, yeah, yeah. Bob Har Harrow at Harrow. Harrow, Harrow at Harrow. Yeah, which uh, Harrow Skate Park was just west of London. Um, and it was built by the same people that built Romford Skate Park, which was just east of London, which is where I learned how to ride. So they were very similar skate parks. But I went, when Bob Harrow was at Harrow Skate Park, that was the first time I'd been to Harrow Skate Park. Okay. Uh, and they had a little competition there, and I think I got second. And um, and then uh, not so long after that, I ended up getting sponsored. Uh, Bob decided to sponsor me. And how was his? Was he an overgripper? An overgripper. Yeah. What? What? When he first shook your hand, did he just take your hand and just like crush it oh, to the oh point my. where you're just I like? You know, I, was, I was thinking overgrip, but what's that? Is that some sort of some sort of freestyle move? Um, <laughs> I, I, I I can't remember where how he shook my hand first time. I really can't. So Why, Joe, he shook his hand so bad 
he lost his memory. So that's how bad he that, shook Campbell's. That's that's pretty extreme overgripping to to flash your memory out like that. <laughs> okay, Eric, had you ever met Bob Harrow? Yeah, Milton Keynes a couple of years ago. Just that's a couple of years ago. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, um, first time. Yeah, first time I met him then. Was he an overgripper with you? Can't remember. I'm wondering if he's got something with these UK writers. Been some. There's definitely been some confirmations that he he excessively squeezes your hand when he shakes it. So we're trying to get. We're just trying to get the facts, fellas. We're just trying to get the facts. <laughs> Okay, I can't say for sure. I can't really. I can't really remember. <laughs> okay, we'll put you down for a maybe. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. yeah right. So put us down for a maybe. Then I can't remember. <laughs> All right, Joe. What's some other ones that we have for these guys? Uh, okay, this one is a little bit involved. Factor freestyle. Eric Steele invented the bar hop roll in. So Eric, I heard that you uh, did a bar hop roll-in. Is this true? James White said, told me about a bar hop roll-in that you did. Bar hop roll-in? Yeah. No, it's like a bar hop football kind of thing. And uh, I didn't write out of it. It's the first time I tried it and it didn't work. <laughs> I missed didn't the work. pedals. I missed the pedals going back in. And have to run but so you're you're on the ramp and you're like the bike is in a bar like as if you're doing a bar hop right and then you yeah, jump. You, do a, you do a bar hop onto the platform so the yeah. bike's behind your legs and then you bar hop back onto the pedals and ride out but i missed the pedals that's insane and you you never pulled it yeah i don't see why everyone that wasn't like a, a big move or anything. That was just something stupid to do for a laugh. <laughs> I think and it's I've great. Heard lot, I've heard a lot about it saying, oh man, that was mad. I don't think it was. <laughs> Factor Freestyle. Craig Campbell invented the 540 wall ride 10 minutes before his run after talking to his mom. In, well, actually, I mean, I, I think the only time, I think I pulled it three times in Santee. And that's the only three. And but when I came to San Diego, it was almost two years ago, I think. Well, it is about two years ago for the the uh, launch of the second edition of the uh, Birth of the Freestyle Movement book. Um, I saw Oscar Gonzalez there, and he said that I did, I did one in at the New York Two Hit Street contest as well, but I don't remember doing that. <laughs> um, so, but I do remember doing three, I think, at Santee at the first street contest, and okay. bailed a few. Um, because yeah, I didn't pull it in the final, so you know I probably would have won that if I, if I had pulled it. But you know, I, I won the qualifiers, <laughs> so ah. yeah, it was good enough just to have done it. To be honest. So so Craig, just a little bit on the timeline of that three sixty wall ride. How many times had you pulled it before the contest? I didn't. I put. I think I pulled it first time at the contest. See. This goes back to Joe's got this whole story about riders in this era that's that made up tricks like right before the run or in the run. Well, and I, I, had, I, I had it, I, I had it in my head to, to do it, uh -huh. but I'd, I'd never, I'd never pulled one. I'd, I'd done um, like a, I guess you to, to, uh, 360 to fakey. Mm -hmm. uh, I, was, I was, I was doing them uh, this wall in Redondo Beach you know, about six months previous, but you could only go to the high, so you couldn't really get the spin. And it wasn't until I went down to Santee and they had that kind of like kicker on the dirt bank. And you yeah. could really go high up the wall. I mean, you saw how high Volker was going. Right. Uh, and, and it gave me the height to be able to spin it, to, to, to get it round to a 540. Um, and I think I did it first time, first attempt. And then um, I think I did a few more and then I crashed a few. And I, I think that was it. And then, and then I don't think anyone else did it for about 10 years. <laughs> right. That's amazing. So yeah, I'm pretty, pretty proud of that one. Fact or freestyle, the Gumby Vendetta. I think you need to share the Gumby Vendetta story, Joe. Okay, so 
one of the things that we've been asking people on the show is when someone gets credit for inventing a trick or what has to happen for people to get credit for inventing a trick. And there was this story of R.L. Osborne and the backwards rubber ride. Well, at, that, at the contest that he debuted it, in amateur, James McGraw did a backwards rubber ride in that same contest a few hours before R.L. did. And so we're like, well, is that a foul? Did he get that? And so when we asked Eddie Fiola, he said, well, whoever gets it in the magazine first claims it. But, but the problem with, with that as the criteria is that you guys know the Nori handstand? Yeah. Well, Dean Palacio did the Nori handstand two people. He went two people ahead of Dave in the contest and did it. <laughs> And then he actually got in the magazine. And so I, I think that this bothered Dave. And for in between the two contests, I think that, well, OK, before I go into that, Dave, can you explain how, how you invented the Gumby? Well, because I understand yeah, so, you pulled it so for the just, first time. Just to give, yeah, it was my first contest. And it was my one big trick that I had, like, I felt like it was original and and i and i had created it in my mind and then two people before me i was trying not to watch the riders and this guy dean that i rode with down at the beach occasionally did the trick that i was hoping to debut so i was really bummed i still did the trick it still turned out really well and then there was a contest two months later and uh i was actually in front just like practicing for my run maybe 10 minutes before the contest and my mom's taking photos and uh, I'm doing a handstand, the one that's on the pedal now. So I'm leaning on the pedal and then I twist and my mom's like, hey, why don't you take your hand off? So I twist and I lean my shoulder on the, the wheel and I go under the frame and I'm like waving and then I twist up into a Gumby and my mom's like, what is that? I've never seen it. I go, well, it's not really a trick. I'm just goofing off. And so my mom says, do it in your run. So the first time I ever did it was right before my run, then I did it in my contest. Come on in, Nada. Hold on a second. It just seems like a very difficult trick to do. And I'm kind of doubting that he learned it 10 minutes before. I actually think that, I actually think that he worked very hard in between those two contests to pull it. But now, but now the fact that you pulled that wall ride 540 for the first time in the contest, it seems to be undermining my theory of the Gumby Vendetta. <laughs> yeah, thank, yeah, thank you, Craig. Because basically, Joe's got this whole storyline that I went into seclusion for two months and created this trick just so I could get in the magazine, I could call it a Gumby, and then you know make sure that no one else had done it. And that was not, I just, I just did the trick. And Joe's like, oh yeah, you just made up the Gumby spur of the moment. Like, like Craig said, you know, I just had it in my head. I'm like, okay, I can just do this, twist it around, and then it happened, so. Well, I, I might be, I might not yet be right. <laughs> right. We, I was sitting in the passenger seat, and uh, all of a sudden we come over, over this little hill, and the traffic's dead stop. And there's like backed up for, you know, a good quarter mile. And so Brian just casually slams on the brakes and the van starts to jackknife. And then I'm, I'm like grabbing the dashboard, just freaking out. And he's just like pushes me back, like so he could look in the, in the side view mirror and turns the wheel and like literally swerves two or three times, gets in the emergency lane and he's still going like 45, 50 miles. He goes all the way to the very beginning of the, of the backed up traffic and then just pulls in. <laughs> And I was just like, what the hell just happened? Like, I couldn't believe that. Well, one, we didn't crash. And two, he just snaked everybody that was just standing, you know, waiting in line to, to, to get through the traffic. I like that you called it snaking. Uh, Eric, do you, so do you have any of this background about the James White and Phil Dolan uh, rivalry where Phil you know, for 20 years has been 
riding in front of the camera while James is filming. <laughs> no. No, it's got to be cold there. <laughs> Nothing. Well, I guess that settles it. <laughs> Factor Freestyle. Eric Steele subscribed to the hand plant format to up his game. So Eric, how about the, the, the hand plant? How did, how did that come to be? Yeah. Let's hear that. Were you, were you the first, I mean, I know you did, I saw it in 86, but you said you did it even earlier. So tell us a little bit about how that came to be and when you first did it and where that was. I was riding Rom, uh, the, the, the pool in Rom and, uh, a roller skater called Andy Peerless come up and he said, oh, you want to try a hand plant? I went, yeah, whatever. And um, he spent like an hour with me, showed me how to do it and stuff. And um, just pulled it that first day within the hour in the pool at Rom. And it's very different to anywhere else. And that was, that was early, maybe even late 84, early 85. Wow. But Ron Paul is different to any other. Uh? I've got a photograph with you, Eric, I think, at Chingford. At Chingford, yeah. Doing a hand plant. It's not yeah. a very good picture. It's a bit, it's a bit out of frame, but and, and you're kind of, you've got one foot off, but I think I've got that somewhere still. I've still got a box of photos with uh, from that period. I think oh, I've, yeah. got that on, I've got that on my phone, Craig, the one that you took. Yeah, but Ron Paul, it, it's like overhang, and then you've got the coping, and it's just... It kind of was the right nice shape to it. Right. Yeah. So you had, a, you had a hand plant coach, it sounds like. Hand plant coach, yeah. A, a, a roller, roller skater. skater. A roller skater, ah. I still speak to him, Andy Peters, every now and then. He's on Facebook. Yeah. What, yeah. What's the guy's name again, Eric? At, Andy, Andy Peters. Peters. Okay, good. It was, it, was, it was like quite, it was a roller skater legend. You know, he used to, um, you know, do big airs and stuff. It's a bit, it's a bit like the English Fred Blood. Yeah, that's good. exactly what I was thinking of. Yeah. Yeah. You know, that kind of crazy, like wide leg kind of style, you know? Right, right. Watching Wilkerson and Blyther's reaction was just like priceless to, to see. Oh, in the back again. <laughs> your light no, keeps going the out day I, the day I learned it, it was it was yeah I've, I've, I've got yeah i've got this sus man this is all right this is yeah. good and then practically every time after that i've gone too fast and it's not been steep and i earned it just but the day i learned it i thought oh these are quite easy to be fair it wasn't yeah. bad yeah compared to other tricks i've learned but yeah it seemed it seemed doable all the time, and then it just wasn't. <laughs> it comes sorry, back to I, tell, tell you. I always like the look of, but I never got my head around trying it really. But I, I, I like the idea of it, and um, yeah, it looks looks cool. Now, now I guess it, it's kind of a it's a pretty standard trick these days. I guess. Yeah, I mean, it took a while for it to be standard trick, from what I recall. It took years and years for dudes. Well, to... I say standard. It's still, still a really difficult trick, but um, yeah, a lot of people do it now, I guess. I don't know. I've, you know. Factor Freestyle. A shadowy cabal of elite riders got props for cracking tough wheels. Right. How long would it take you to crack those uh, tough wheels? Crack tough wheel? Yeah, well, I, I'm, I was quite proud of myself to have done that. Um, I did that at the, um, at the Vans warehouse in Orange County. They had the uh, half pipe, vert half pipe and, and a mini ramp next to it. And there was about, I don't know, a gap of about, I don't know how far it was, 12 feet maybe. And, and I did a channel from the vert to the uh, mini ramp. S tried to spin a sort of again, a kind of like a 450, I guess it would be, um, not quite 540. Um, and just because the ramps were offset, they weren't perfectly lined up. I landed flat bottom on the mini ramp sideways and snapped it up in half. And uh, yeah, and and Spike Jones called it as, in a sequence. So that's pretty cool. <laughs> well, we had Vic Murphy on with Matt, uh, and and he talked about the Dirt Brother bikes 
always would have a, a mag on the front and then just a regular rim on the back because they were always blowing up. Their street style was a little too rough on the, on the tough wheels. Factor Freestyle, Eric Steele invented the donkey, sorry. Factor Freestyle, Eric Steele invented the donkey picker 10 months before someone else named it the pedal picker. That's so cool. Oh, you know you were saying about tricks you make up just messing about? Yeah. I kind of invented the, what they call it, a pedal picker. What? Yeah. Oh, like the cherry picker. Yeah, like a cherry picker, but I couldn't do them and just done it on the coaster brake. Uh, Jess Darrenforth actually called it a donkey picker, which is sometimes known in England. A donkey picker? <laughs> a donkey picker. <laughs> he was obsessed with donkeys for some reason, Jess. Uh, Jess is. Jess, this yeah, he's got a quirky incredible. sense of humour, Jess. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, nowadays it's pretty hard to come up with something new. And uh, I have a challenge for Mr. Joe Sickman. His name is actually Sisman, by the way, but I call him Sick Man because he's a sick rider. Um, so anytime you refer now, to Joe. He sick Man because he has a platform. He has an internet TV show and he figures he can run my ball on internet TV. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, Eric. Let me ask you this question. You, you, you just gave us a massive list of tricks that you invented, which is astounding. And it's like rewriting history. And my mind is blown. Your manager, was he giving you props for doing all this? I mean, this is, in, this is incredible what you did. Was he oh, acknowledging I, that? I wrote for Space 7. I wrote for Space 7. And... Um... Joe, I've known for years and years beforehand. But it's interesting that this has come up because we were talking with Mark Eaton about uh, the whole plywood hoods and when they came into the scene. And it's like when, um, have you ever heard the story when the, the first ships came to, from the Spains came to uh, North America, that the natives didn't actually see the ships because they'd never seen a ship before. And it's like this phenomena that happens. It's like only the shaman would be able to see these ships. And it feels like that happened in freestyle when Kevin Jones and the plywood hoods had such revolutionary tricks that, that the AFA here in the States was run mostly by parents and organizers, not riders, not like it is nowadays where judges were parents and or just organizers. So they would see something like, imagine if a guy back then did his whole routine breakless. Mm -hmm. Everyone that was a rider would be like mad respect. They couldn't believe how you know hard that is and how amazing it is when the judges that were parents and organizers didn't see it. So it's like a phenomenon that that happens. And I feel like that probably happened in your case, Craig, when you're talking about the whole street scene, like you kind of had this picture, like this is where I feel like the sport is going. This is where my, yeah. you know, this is my yeah, drive. He didn't have that vision at all. And Pete just didn't see it. It was like just over no, his head. He couldn't relate. Yeah. Not at all. No. Yeah. Not at all. Yeah, and uh, still in the UK was a lot different to America. But, um, you know, that didn't, didn't happen. And you wasn't something. allowed to ride in that one either, were you? Weren't allowed to ride half pipes. <laughs> no, but, but the first half pipe jam, you got took home, didn't you? Because someone yeah, was... Yeah, yeah, yeah. You tried to, put stop, tried to put stops to me riding street and half pipes. Like Mons Ram and yeah. uh, Ching, Chingford. <laughs> they, were the, they were the best things going. All, that, all, all the good stuff that I was into... He didn't want any part of it or, or have me involved in it, you know? It's ridiculous. Wow. Absolutely. Um, so, yeah, thankful for that. Yeah, that, that reminds me of my story of uh, when I met Bob, because uh, he came to a contest in, in Lakeside, just a small contest. And matter of fact, it was one of the one contests that I had to ride Vert and, and uh, Flatland. Whoever was the organizer, it wasn't the typical one. It wasn't an AFA. It was just like another little small organization that was doing it. And Bob had got word um, from Ron Wilton 
to go see this flatland rider from San Diego, Dave Nori. So he comes out there and uh, that's when he actually it was after my run. Thank goodness. Cause he, he crushed my hand. I wouldn't have been able to ride <laughs> if it was before my run, but I had to ride a half bite or a quarter pipe. And I couldn't even do airs. I literally did a little 180 and like landed 90 and almost like I needed to bail off the bike. It was not pretty. But anyhow, um, I met Bob and Bob told me, oh, yeah, we got some shows coming up. Maybe I'll call you in a couple of weeks. And I figured this guy says that to like everybody he meets. This is Bob Haro. Like he's just being nice. But literally to the day, he called me two weeks later and that phone call same as what you know that phone call for you craig changed my world i like he said yep we got some shows come on, come up get some bikes we got some shows in stockton it was my first show i did with him and uh it's just amazing to look back at those those pivotal moments where it was just a phone call and and it opened up so much well guys i know it's pretty late there so we should probably uh wrap it up it looks like eric's gonna go to bed now no, no, I've just had to move. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe your, your girls are probably long asleep by now. All right, guys. Yeah. Well, thank you guys so much for taking time to. It's been it's been awesome to hang out with you guys. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Let's do it again sometime. <laughs> Word. Yeah, absolutely. It's always good to hear what's happening in the other side of the world, and yeah, it's just nice to hear the stories and kind of reminisce a little bit yeah we're going to set the record straight we're going to give you props for all this stuff i, I <laughs> love the donkey picker by the way yeah the donkey picker <laughs> <laughs>